So here we are in Hong Kong, in Berkeley, California, Margie Adam, Herod Leong. <laughs> Is that and Margie? Yeah, Harold and Margie talking about Best Friend the Unicorn Song. Gee, and here it is, George Lamb, who, who recorded this un, un, unusual song. I, I would love to hear Harold, tell me your story. I'd love to hear it. How did you come across this song? Yes. Well, uh, well, it's a long story. I mean- Oh, but we uh, have plenty of time. If you're not in a rush, I'm not in a rush. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, when I was a child, you know, back in the days, we, you know, um, my family, my mom and dad and my sister, older sister, we, we live in a small room. So every night when we go to bed, we have a, you know, cassette, you know, yeah. cassette, you know, kids nowadays, you know, don't know about this cassette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this size. Okay, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, we have one. And uh, because a cassette can carry like, you know, five to 10 songs. So every night we play the same, you know, songs and the Chinese version of, you know, Best Friend, the Unicorn song is one of them. And so it's just like, you know, the melody has been, has been implanted in my mind, you know. Yes. Uh, I, I grew up and, and very interestingly, and uh, it's not on purpose, but, uh, I have three children and when they, you know, grew up, they're, they're much bigger now, but when they grew up, uh, you know, as parents, sometimes we have difficulty to put, put them to sleep. Yeah. So we play the song, we play that song, and then I don't know why, but every time we play, you know, the Josh Lamb song and they, they fall to sleep easily. <laughs> and that... And then this is, you know, very important to parents. So we, we find this trick and then it becomes the, you know, the, the what's that called, the doula vibe. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> and personally, I, um, more history about the Cantonese version of the song. I, I guess you, you may know about this. Uh, the lyrics writer is, uh, you know, is, is, a, is a very famous, you know, talk. Uh, Cantonese pop Chinese book writer. He passed away. He's like the lyrics writer guru in in wow. Cantonese song. And, and what was his name? Uh, Long Zhan Kang, also Mr. Lam. Oh Lam yes. Zhan Zhan Kang. I'm not sure he has an English name. And uh, and the writing kind of you know touched me when I you know I, I grew up. I knew the song and knew lyrics, but when I really like maybe in my 20s or 30s, I really sit down and look at the lyrics. I say, oh, wow, uh, talk, it talks about mm, the inner world of a person. Yes. Uh, and there are, you know, few lines that, that, that really touched me. And then I, I try to find out why. And, and then I do, you know, uh, internet, internet search and I found, oh, it's what, it's actually your song. And then, uh, but interestingly, th that is when I find out, you know, quite some time ago, uh, there are a lot of uh, rumors saying that, okay, this song, the original writer, Margie Adam, uh, she writes about uh, the inner world of an autistic child. And, and I, I, at that time, I assume it's, it's the truth because uh, to be honest, I, I didn't know uh, yeah. your name before that. Sure, sure. So uh, after many, many years, and uh, we're now uh, working on a uh, project on autism. You know, we want to debunk the misunderstanding about autism. Oh, because, oh, okay, a little background about uh, Pupa Channel is, is, yeah. is um, online media that only talks about P-O-P-A is the first two letters of positive parenting. So we talk about oh, parenting content. Oh, great. Uh -huh. And, and uh, well, we, we see there's a need to talk about autism and there are, you know, certain types of misunderstanding in, in, in autism in the subject. So uh, I 
look into the matters and then I, I do more you know, research and then I find out, okay, the rumor about the song and autism only exists in the Cantonese world. Yes, right. In English world, it doesn't exist. Right. And then I look into your, your background, your past work, and yes. you know more about yourself. And then say, I just don't think this is true. I'm not sure now. I, I, I look forward to listening sure. to your, your, yeah. your side of the story. And, um, and when I you know, search uh, Mark the Adam and Autism, there's no result from Google. So I'm, uh, you know, I guess this, there must be an understanding. And, and I, I thought about, about it and, and I think I was thinking, okay, the best way is to, you know, get in touch with you. Sure. Yes, exactly. <laughs> ask you the question and, you know, hear what you, you, you have, you, yes. you, 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 know, you tell me about the background of the song. And this is why we are here. I'm dying to know what were the particular lines in the song that touched you, that when you went back and listened to it, when you were in your 20s, that moved you in particular ways. I, I would love to know that. Okay, I, I can. Oh. I can, I can <laughs> tell you right now. Okay. There is a line. Uh, first of all, the translation is, mm, is I would say, uh, the meaning is there, but there are certain connotation is, uh, is uh is uh I think it's not exactly you know word by word translation. Yes, yes. So uh, number one, uh, there is a line saying that when you know in, in Cantonese when I was 18, you know, in your song is 17. I don't know why that's you know one, one year. Oh apart. 17, right. In the second verse, yes. <laughs> yes, and, and, and in the Cantonese version, and when I was 18, yes, um, you know, also Nocton Star is my you know friend. Yes. And the second the, what follows is uh, nobody comes to my door in my heart to knock my door. And nobody ever knows and listen to my, you know, to my, to my inner voice, to, to what I think. Yes. But now I find the key, the inner key. And that, that is, you know, that is from you. Yes. That's number one. Okay. And the, uh, the, third, the, third, uh, the third part of the song, now I'm a grown up. Uh, well, this one is, is I, I don't know where I got up. Uh, now I've had big glasses, I've soft sightedness. Yeah. And the second line is now I can train, I, I'm trained to, you know, run inside my heart. This one is heavy. I, I, I actually don't know how, whether I, I'm not sure whether I translate this correctly, uh, but it, it says, now I'm trained, uh, I can, you know, run, you know, run inside my heart. This one is heavy. Huh. So these two lines, I, I think, uh, personally, what I think is uh, this song talks about uh, the inner world and of a uh, lonely person a little bit yes. and more importantly an introverted person yes yes and this person yeah people call him crazy mm -hmm. but when i'm when i grown up i'm 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 fine with it because i find the peace and joy in my inner world so i just don't care i'm yes. And yeah, so <laughs> my take, my take from this song is, uh, is about you know being different from others. Yes. And you know which is fine. And my guess is that people uh, misunderstood it in a way that okay, lonely person, introverted person, 
equals autistic person. And I, this is something that I, I, I want to, you know, debunk if this is not the case. Well, lonely person, introverted person, autistic person, that's like apples, pears, trucks. I mean, it's, it's so what do you mean as, as you describe it? What do you mean by autism? How is that defined okay. in your culture for me to understand? Okay. Um, this is a very good question. Mm. I think it's a very much a cultural thing. Um, autism, nowadays, I think uh, a, lot, a lot more people understand it's, uh, you know, disorder, you know, yeah. in, 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 you know, medical terms. But back in the days, in the 80s, autism is a word that describes, you know, lonely people, introverted people. Okay. Mm, mistakenly, okay. I think. So sometimes when, uh, you know, even when, 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 when we tease our friends, okay, why are you, you know, why, why, why are you staying at home, not coming out to meet your friends to chill out and we will say that, oh, are, are you autistic? You know, okay. we, we joke about this in this way, in Cantonese, yes. back in the days. And yes. I don't think that uh, that is the case in the English world. So, and this, kind of um, connection between, you know, introverts and autism, I think kind of build up the rumors and misunderstanding. Uh -huh. I think there's a very unique culture in, in, in Cantonese. Oh, boy, well, that's very helpful for me to get a context. Um, this song came through me. It came, from someplace I don't know, someplace that I feel very grateful that I could touch down into or touch over into it. In poetic artistic language, it's called the muse or the you know, the creative impulse or all that, but I didn't use any of that language at all. Um, I, I never studied songwriting. I, I have no uh, background in, in composition, except what I listened to growing up. Um, and I, I listened to uh, George Gershwin and Rachmaninoff and uh, Debussy and Ravel and, um, Carol King and Laura Nero and Joni Mitchell and um, Rogers and Hammerstein. Mm -hmm. And I think that I, I learned the structure of a popular song just by taking in that music. I learned what I thought sounded beautiful, but I didn't learn about how you write a melody that goes along with a set of lyrics and makes it make sense or how you boost feeling by slowing down. I didn't learn any of that. I, I just showed up <laughs> with the piano and, um, and began to write music with lyrics, which was just shocking and thrilling for me. And I wrote the first lines of the unicorn song in a half an hour. Uh, when I was growing up, my best friend was a unicorn. My friends all smiled at me and called me crazy. I wrote it in a half an hour and put it on my piano and mm -hmm. left it there. I had the melody. I had the lyrics. I had no idea. This is before the popular culture embraced the unicorn as a cute little piece of jewelry or uh, on T-shirts or the whole idea of a unicorn as a symbolic um, magical gesture or any of that, that didn't exist. And I have no idea where it came from, but it sat there and um, I kept playing it and I kept singing it and it kept not going anywhere. And that's the way I wrote music. I just kept 
coming back to whatever the melody was or the lyric line was and checked in with it to see if there was anything else there. So it was totally mysterious to me how the music unfolded and how the lyric unfolded. And this is true of <laughs> my- all the you wrote? I'm sorry? For all the songs that you wrote? Yes. <laughs> they just, like they just came through me. They just came through me. As I, as I became more of a, a composer and a songwriter, meaning more on purpose about it and, and thought about it, I did notice that I wrote verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus. I, I did hear, and people would say, you know, how do you write and ask me questions about that in interviews? So I did analyze what I was doing. But aside from a few songs, very few people asked me where the lyrics came from. What, what was the genesis of a particular song? I wrote a song called I've Got a Fury. And the lyric was so uh, in your face. It was so... Uh, confrontive, this is also on my first album, Songwriter, mm -hmm. that people said, um, because I was writing within the women's liberation movement, they were saying, oh, this must be, you're really angry at men. <laughs> and I said, oh, no, it has nothing to do with men at all. It's, I'm writing it about my mother. <laughs> and people were completely shocked. Oh, oh, your mother, huh? So I think I... I feel fortunate that I, I just let myself be, Harold. I just let myself be. So this song came to me it unfolded on its own. I wouldn't have applied loneliness or solitude. I, I, differentness, I would have said, yes, this is about a child that's grappling with her sense of being different. And again, I didn't analyze this. I didn't put the song together in what I now understand it to be. And, and I think that's one of the extraordinary gifts of artistry. If, if one is fortunate to be given artistic expressions, you know, whether it's in dance or poetry or, or music or whatever it is, um, I crafted the song, but the song came through me from someplace beyond my control. And so the fact that it starts out with a child and goes to a teenager and then ends up as adult, <laughs> I think that's very cool, but I didn't think that through. <laughs> it's the song came, evolved. It, 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 as it was writing itself, it evolved. I do think that as a you know twenty something young woman, um, in nineteen seventy one, seventy two, seventy three, you know, I did, uh, coming to understand that my that I loved women, you know, coming to understand that I that my heart was being drawn into a world that was considered illegal and immoral and crazy, and you know, like how to, I think for any person who's drawn into a world that's not conventional, one has to make one's peace with that. And I think as a young woman doing that myself, over here and over here in my culture and in my politics and in my thinking, the song is a kind of 
heartfelt reflection of that, of coming to terms with the truth about myself in a way that was ultimately self-acceptance. I think it would be that. I would say that more than anything. And as you were talking, Harold, that's exactly what I heard in your interpretation of the song. Mm -hmm. You know, there, I, I, I don't remember being blue when I wrote the song. I, I don't remember being lonely or, um, or in any way separate from, but the song has been claimed by so many young people over the years, you know, kids and young people who have come up to me as adults in concerts and said, your song really helped me to get through a difficult time, just coming to terms with myself, realizing I wasn't gonna be a doctor. You know, I wanted to be a painter. I wasn't gonna be a this, I wanted to be a that, or just stuff about self-acceptance. Um, the interior part that's in the song, that's built into the song, um, I think there's no way to analyze that. And if, the, if there are individuals who hear this song and find comfort from the song that are autistic, I've, I find that extraordinary. I, I find that an unexpected gift of the universe that came through me. If there's any individual who hears this song and says, there's a pathway for me in here, there's a pathway for me. And it's not the one that all everybody else is going on, it's my path. And that, and that is acceptable to me. And that's enough. What you were saying, Harold, um, I, I was asked, I, I had an opportunity um, at some point, I don't remember when it was, to, to sing on this uh, very, very popular television show. Um, and they said, you know, we only have five minutes for you. So you have to decide what song you want to sing. And I, you know, I had a catalog, a uh, catalog. Uh, <laughs> a repertoire of songs. And I thought, oh my God, I only have one song, one song. And they said, and we don't, you can't really sing. You have to talk and sing. So you can't really sing a long song. Mm -hmm. And Best Friend, The Unicorn is like five minutes long. But I thought of all the songs that I've ever written, if I only have one thing that I get to communicate to more people than I will probably ever perform for in this one five minutes, millions and millions of people what is it that I want to say? And this is the song, Best Friend the Unicorn. Not because of my experience, but because of the experience audiences were already telling me they were having in their own individual ways. So I have you spoken to anyone within the autistic community who claims this song, who loves this song and draws joy from this song? Not personally. No. Do you know that within the autistic community, there are young people or children or adults who hear themselves in this song? Do you know that that's true? Do you... mm -hmm. From discussion on, you know, on internet, in, in, on forums, yes, a lot of, uh, first of all, not most of the discussions are, you know, non-autistic non people. So yes, I understand. Maybe, Friends of family members. Yeah, are, maybe I, families of autistic I understand. People. So it would be a family member saying, my child, my son, my daughter really loves this song. They hear themselves in this song. I see them. They react differently for this song. Is that? Mostly, mostly is... Um, the parents, when they have uh, autistic children, um, they come to understand, you know, more of how the inner world of the child is from the song. Oh, and we'll go ahead. And uh, much more discussions, uh, you know, just lonely introverted people 
they talk yeah. about the song and they you know claim the the the, the intention of the original writer is to write about the upbringing of an autistic child yeah and i and I hope what you're hearing from me is that I had no intention. I yeah, I, I the song I came I, through me. So and and in some ways that's the best possible, you know, result because then people get to interpret the song, you know, I've got a fury, <laughs> you know, for some group of women who really want to express their rage towards their husbands. I don't know, I'm making this up now, but <laughs> and using I've got a fury in therapy <laughs> or consciousness raising um, but uh, and bless their hearts you know I, I that song actually had an intention but the unicorn song it's a gift and however it moves in the world I I'm I'm really happy, Harold. I'm really happy about it. Um, it was not my intention to write a song about a unicorn. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, a lot of people have made fun of me about that song because other parts of my catalog are not children's songs. You know, they're political songs, they're love songs, they're, you know, um, how should we say? Um, Self-actualization songs. Uh, right, right. But, you know, you could, if you wanted to, say that Best Friend the Unicorn Song was an early self-actualization song, you know? I think it is. I, I think you can, you can put it in that category, but that was not my intention. I think I was, yeah, I would have to say, um, it's had its own way. You know, I understand over there uh, in Hong Kong that um, the unicorn song, George's uh, version of the song was used uh, in an advertisement for a condominium development. Oh, at some I, point i'm not aware of that maybe i was too young yeah there was a uh you know like a video it was an advertisement the song was actually in an advertisement about a young family and uh uh and that was the song that was used okay. something to do with selling condos and i thought well wow What's going on over in Hong Kong? <laughs> this song is, you know, from, uh, it, you know, it's shown up in so many places. Uh, Actually, it's, it's, a, it's a classic. I, I love it. I Not love only it in the artistic community. I'm sorry? Not only in the artistic community, yeah. just everywhere. I mean, in, 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 in my age. So, Mark, you, when you talk about, uh, you know, the the songs that you wrote, the, the lyrics that you wrote just comes through you, right? After those, actually, I heard about that from, you know, artists and, you know, sure. that, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that happens. I, I, I know that I haven't experienced that. I, I wish I could, but I just don't have the opportunity yet. Yeah. Did you say you yet? Harold, no, did you say I, no. yet? No, I haven't had the opportunity yet to. Yeah, to... right. Well, see, that's yes. you're getting ready. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, you're um, and after the moment, when you look back, were you able to connect? Okay, the lyrics that you just wrote, does it connect to, you know, your your past experience, your inner world? I mean, did unicorn? have a place in, 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 in your, you know, upbringing? No, no, I had, there were no unicorns. I, I, and there, 
access to that mythology was not available at, you know, in the, you know, I was born in 1947. So I would have been a young child in the 50s. Mm -hmm. There was, you know, um, I'm trying to think the kinds of children's books we had, you know, Dumbo and uh, I don't even remember them anymore. But okay. yeah, no. actually, in, in the Cantonese version, uh, we don't use uh, unicorn, we use elephant, maybe Dumbo. That's, that, that's where oh. I said, uh, are you aware of that? No. Uh -uh. When I was growing up, uh, you know, not the oh, best you didn't thing, use but... unicorn, you used something else. Yeah, uh, uh, an elephant. Oh, an elephant. Oh, my God. Yeah, Dumbo, a flying oh. elephant. Oh, that's Dumbo. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I had no idea of all the of all the animals, of all the uh, magical animals, really. Wow. Well. So I, I just I, wonder whether the, the Cantonese lyrics writer had uh, this I mean, conversation with you, with you before he did the translation, no? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Um, I mean, I'm saying absolutely, meaning I, I would have loved that if we had a conversation, especially since it sounds as if this fellow was, this gentleman was, uh, I imagine, if you said he was really well known and well mm -hmm. thought of, that he was an elegant translator and really brought the, I would say, the Cantonese interpretation of the English intention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would imagine that because Dumbo would be great. I mean, yeah, it, it is Dumbo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. But uh, in general, I remember I wrote a song called Beautiful Soul, which is also on this album that I mentioned, the songwriter album. Um, and I thought I had written it about a woman that I loved very, very much who was really struggling. And I was in the middle of performing it um, in Los Angeles. I can still remember how it felt. I was singing a song and I had turned as I did, turn to the audience. So I was playing and singing into the microphone, but I was facing the audience and singing to them. And all of a sudden, the realization came over me that I had written the song to myself. Mm. That it was, uh, it was about me. And I, I don't recall very many experiences of kind of stumbling across a different kind of understanding about the lyrics that I have written, but that that's certainly a song where that happened. Um, but with the unicorn song, in some ways, Harold, it came out fully formed. I wrote this lyric, it sat on the piano for maybe six months. And then I sat down and wrote the rest of the song in a half an hour. I mean, it just fell out. It just, I'd been playing the melody and singing the line for so long and physically inhabiting the piece of music so that it was effortless for me to play it. And that's how I wrote a lot of music all the way through. I would physically find where the, where the, the singing, the melody, the lyric, the, the feeling of the song, how it came through my hands and my body, because I'm sitting down, right? I always sang right. sitting down because I was playing the piano while I was singing, right? Because that's me accompanying myself. Right. So it, uh, it was remarkable to me. I, I do remember that. Uh, I spent the most time on the lyric, seeing is believing, in the things you see, loving is believing in the ones you love. Is that true? 
How about knowing is believing in the things you know? Well, that's not true. Mm. How about, and I kind of went down that little path. I remember doing it and trying to figure out, is this true? Is that true? Mm. And what came clear and simple was those things are true. Seeing is believing a particular kind of seeing, although I didn't get in my head about it. I thought, yes, I think that's right. And loving is believing in the ones you love. That's definitely right. I can settle the song right there. Did the lyrics come before or after the music? With Best Friend the Unicorn song, the lyrics came right with the song. I was playing. Yeah, you know. Yes, I was wow. playing. I, I had a, I had the, introduction i had the introduction and i kept playing the introduction over and over and over again this is all often true in in both uh, particularly my instrumental music um are you aware that i have a whole body of piano solo music yeah, yeah, yeah. okay uh, so and that's often the case with the piano music as well just playing and playing and playing the same thing over and over again until i make a mistake and then go boop not a mistake really it's a portal into the next place so i would play and play and play the introduction of the song and i had the first and then that's all i had for four, six months i just wow. kept singing it but I was not upset by knowing I did not conform. Wow. <laughs> this line is beautiful. Where did that come from? Wow. And then the, I mean, really, it, it all. Line, I think the Cantonese version missed, missed this line. I think this line is beautiful. Oh. Well, so. Actually, I, so sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, you you now are an unusual person in your community mm -hmm. who are interested in this song in that you know and have listened to, I imagine, more than a few times to the English version, my version of Best Friend the Unicorn Song, mm -hmm. up next to the Cantonese version. And do you have the same feeling at the end of both versions? Well, first of all, it's not only a couple of times because uh, I, this is interesting. I, maybe I, I can share a little bit more about this. Uh, first of all, I watched the video that you put on your YouTube channel that you play <laughs> yes. the song the first time. That was beautiful. You put it this year, March, I remember. Yes, yes. Oh, that's and, great. <laughs> and then, uh because my children love this song right and i told them about you know what happened oh uh i i found out that this song is actually from another person called margie adam and then you know two weeks ago when i first got in touch with you i said oh margie adam replied my email and then when we driving the now the 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 especially my daughter that uh, my elder daughter she said in, 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 instead of listening to the Chinese version, she picked your song to oh. listen to. Oh. And today, I, I, you know, when when they headed out for school, I, 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 I she, I mean, they, they, they knew I'm going to talk to you. So it's more than a couple of times that I listened to, and, um, and to answer your question, this is a very good question. I think, um, it's different. The um, feeling from listening to your song and reading your lyrics. I think the positive side is stronger. I wasn't upset but not by knowing I did not conform. This is powerful, very positive. And the chorus, sing is believing. The chorus, I don't know why, but the Cantonese version is very different. 
so um so the the, the feeling is I, and first of all I, I think after this call i i i what i want to do i want to translate literally word by word the Kenneth, Kenneth's version into english i send it to you so that oh, you i'd love that here it's number one that. number two uh the the feeling is uh the english song the english version uh i agree it is about self acceptance because it talks about the difficult part people call me crazy but i did not conform and the, the 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 ending the chorus is beautiful sing is believing you know loving is believing in the ones you love we don't have that in the Cantonese version and the Cantonese version is kind of like it's a it's a is other than george uh, there are two other person you know the younger version and the teenage version uh -huh. so the three people sing the song uh, and i think it's more like the the account of growing up of a lonely person and uh -huh. he, you know he doesn't care can I can I say that it didn't? But the feeling to me, it didn't. I I I didn't have the 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 positive feeling is you know less mm, apparent. I will say. I mean that's so interesting though, Harold, because it was such a powerful. It's as I understood from you, really such a a a positive song for you in your life as a young one and for your children as well. Mm -hmm. And yet it something about it sounds as you describe it sounds almost melancholy or uh, solitude or I don't know. I it's more about solitude uh -huh. the uh -huh. version and or wistful even uh, solitude, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gosh. So the, the lyric in the Candice. Cantonese version, it says, it's a long walk. I talk to myself. It's a long night, but I don't feel cold. Uh -huh. This is not, it's not nothing negative. It's no. also positive. No, no, no. It's atmospheric. It's beautiful, yeah, actually. It's, it is beautiful, but it's not as powerful as your version. That's uh -huh. my take from, I from, hear you. from the song. I understand. It's it's different. It's very <laughs> different lyrics. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So so now now you have more information about mm -hmm. the song. Yeah. But I think not the information you expected to get. Well, uh not exactly. Number one, uh, I think I got the answer. I think at least I want to uh, debunk the rumor, the, the misunderstanding that Maggie Adam, you know, wrote this song, you know, from on purpose, right? On About purpose. Right. I, I think I got the answer. Got That's it. Number one. And I think I, from the, you know, what you just share, which is beautiful. I think I got much more than that. I, <laughs> I know what you, you, I know the process when you. When, when when you compose the song, when you wrote the song, you know, how the song, the lyrics came through you. Um, yeah, I, I got more than I expected. <laughs> huh? Huh. And, you know, to me personally, it, it is a very special experience. You know, the song that, you know, I listened to when I was, you know, three years old. Yes. And then, song that my children also listen to and um i don't know why and i have chance to talk to the original you know songwriter you yeah. you uh, I, you wouldn't imagine how i mean how how special to me this experience is i'm so glad i'm so happy to have this opportunity i, I it's very unusual for me yeah, I'm going to tell my parents too because my dad is also born in uh, 
1974. Say that again. Your, your parents. My, my father is also born in the same years that you were born. Dave. Oh, and and he's 74. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, in 1947. So he yeah, would be 74. Yeah. yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, lovely. Wow. Is there anything else that you'd like to know? Uh, I think I'm, I'm good. Great. Thank you would, very much for sharing. I, I would love to know how this moves, where this goes from here. Um, some of the music that I have written has ended up in the most extraordinary places. And I feel, you know, like, I have been in some ways a, a channel, you know, something that wanted to be said, wanted to be heard, needed to be heard, came through me, and then ha has ended up over here and over there. And and I, I would love to know where this goes because you're not, you're involved in the song, right. you're in, you're involved in the. Um, I don't know. You're a messenger for something, it feels like. I think that's why I wanted to meet you face to face because the, the song has got a hold of you. <laughs> like it, like it <laughs> certainly got a hold of me. Yeah. What, what we are going to do is uh, number one, I want you uh, on this project on autism, I want to uh, talk about you know, the misunderstanding, because this is important. Okay. Loneliness, introvertness, introvertedness, uh, and autism, they are different. Yes, definitely. I'm not saying, I'm not saying good or bad, but oh, no. if people think the same, there's a misunderstanding and they may have, you know, negative impact to, to children if parents have such misunderstanding. This is, I think this is the original purpose that I, 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 I worked on this project. Yes. And second of all, uh, now I know much more about the song. This is something that I, I, I would also like to do to talk about because self-acceptance is a subject that we would care about a lot. We want, you know, parents or even, you know, parents themselves or, you know, non-parents to understand how important it is. Yes. Self-acceptance yeah. and accepting, you know, the children. Yes. As they and are, who they are. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And I think your conversation gives me more power to, you know, to promote that message. Great, 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 <laughs> Carol. <laughs> Thank you. You make me very you. happy today. Thank I'm you. thrilled to have this opportunity. Thank you. But uh, this is something that I really want to do. I, I want to uh, translate the Cantonese version and into English and send it to you. I would love that. I think this is important. Oh yes, yes. Is this song? Did this song make its way beyond Hong Kong that you're aware of? Is it in Singapore? Is it in Taiwan? Is it in mm. Beijing? Did it, did George's music, this particular song, or is it particular to Hong Kong? I'm not sure, uh -huh. but Cantonese, can, Cantonese oh, yes. pop in the 80s, I think they, they are, you know, they are just everywhere in the, you know, Chinese community in Taiwan, Singapore, in mainland China. Uh -huh. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, people of my age in the places that you to talk about. I'm, uh, I'm, I was born in 78, so I'm 43. <laughs> 43. At such a good age. Well, are you having a good time? Oh, I at, am. I, at I enjoy. Yeah, I, I enjoy what I do. I 
enjoy the time with my family, you know. Oh, you said three children. Yes. And they're now older. 11, uh, 11 9, and 6. Wow. And are girls boys? Uh, a big brother and two younger sisters. Oh. Carol. That's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And your partner and your and your uh, spouse. Elsa. Uh, Elsa. Yeah. And does she is she does she well you don't tell me what you work at. Is this your job? POPA? Yeah. This is job. yeah. Oh that's oh, always that's fine. Great. Yeah. Is, 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 it, is it a newsletter or an organization with a newsletter? Uh it is an online platform. Oh, okay, okay. You said that. That's right. Yes, and uh, we have a Facebook page with uh, over twenty thousand followers. <laughs> we only talked about, uh, you know, parenting. Yeah. You know, uh, we we want to promote positive parenting, and we want to promote the knowledge about you know how parenting can be. Yes. And, you know, provide the help that, you know, parent may need. That's a beautiful, beautiful objective right there. Yeah. Well, I think we've come to the end for today. Thank you Not so like much, Monty. Oh, you're so welcome, Harold. What a joy. Thank you so much. It's just been a joy to talk with you. A complete joy.